Coming up on Profiles in Caring, presented by Equitable Life and Casualty, we'll take you to Zambia, an African nation suffering from the effects of extreme poverty and illiteracy, where we'll introduce you to a mother-daughter team who's helping to solve this, one teacher at a time. It's a heartwarming story you won't want to miss right after these messages. The following Profiles in Caring is made possible through generous support from Equitable Life and Casualty, committed to caring. Welcome to this edition of Profiles in Caring. I'm Kimberly Perkins, and today we're going to Zambia. This African nation has a population of about 10 million people. Of that, only 400,000 have jobs, and even worse, about 87% are so illiterate they can't even read or write their own names. And it's not due to a, a lack of schools or a lack of children who want an education. It's due to a lack of teachers. We met some people trying to change that. This week, we're introducing you to a mother-daughter team, Peggy and Jenny Rogers, and their group, Zambia's Scholarship Fund. Their mission? Giving the world's poorest an education, a better life. And believe it or not, it all started with a chance encounter, as two people met because of a simple classified ad. When my husband was actually going to the University of Utah, and I didn't have a job, I was raising children at the time. And we lived in a one-bedroom apartment with two little children and one on the way. And we were selling an old black and white television set that my grandmother had given us. And there was a, a up at the university housing, they had this little newspaper that you could sell things in. And I got a knock on the door, and I said, where are you from? And he said, Zambia. And I'd never even heard of Zambia. I, seriously, I started thinking, is that South America? And he said, oh, that's in Africa, madam. And then he told me that he had his wife here, and she was very lonely, and he was buying the television set for her. So I went over and I met Ruth for the first time and because of our friendship we spent countless hours I just and it's uh, interesting that two people from such different cultures and and such different parts of the world we had so much in common through this new friendship formed between Peggy and her new Zambian best friend Ruth Peggy was stunned as she learned the shocking details of a seemingly forgotten African country suffering from extreme poverty Zambia is a beautiful and peaceful country located in the southeastern part of Africa. However, not only is Zambia landlocked in Africa, it is also locked economically. It's a very beautiful place over here. Um, there's a lot of vegetation, but it doesn't put food on the table. It doesn't put clothes on their back. It doesn't take the hunger pains away when they're trying to sleep at night. These girls would give anything that they have in the world to come to America and to enjoy the things that we take for granted, that we take for granted on a daily basis in America. Zambia is one of the few African countries where extreme poverty is continually on the rise and sadly the life expectancy here is now only 36 years and dropping. The impoverished government cannot adequately provide educational opportunities, so the illiteracy rate is also increasing every year. Can you hear the prayer of a children? What the new generation of Zambians want more desperately than anything else is education. And through these heartbreaking stories of Zambia told by Ruth, Peggy's life's mission began to transform. I mean, she told me about her mother, and her mother believed in education. And that always stuck in my mind, how hard her mother worked 
to put her six children into school, scrubbing, doing, washing people's clothes, and, and you know, I mean, this, this is not work. This is manual labor to try to get her children into school. Ruth's husband graduated with a teaching degree and they moved back to Zambia, but that didn't end the friendship. After 25 years of correspondence, Peggy finally managed to raise the money to go visit her friend and the country she had fallen in love with. I figured I knew poverty. I wasn't prepared for, for poverty like this. I wasn't prepared for, for death. And I always remember the children, I, you know, it's just, of, of course, you just, I always remember their feet, their dusty little feet, their sores all over their feet because of sleeping on the ground and having the bugs and different things crawl on them. And I didn't know hunger, I didn't know suffering. You know, the, the crying of the children at night, that probably bothered me more than anything. They've got toothaches, stomach aches, they've got all those things and they don't have anything to give them. My mother went to Kabul. She was about to get a surgery, but then she just died. My father got poisoned in a bar in Dola. But here sometimes we don't eat. What do you do when there's nothing to eat? I just, I just take a book and read. Sometimes I cry. Peggy was inspired to help, but knew that simple handouts of food and money could only last so long, and that would not solve the root problem that has crippled this impoverished nation. And then she met a young man named Romigio. He says, you know, you Americans, you have it all. And you just don't understand what it's like. More than food and more than clothes, I want to go to school. And I thought, well, I'll, I'll help Romigio go to school. I mean, I, I can afford that. And then I start thinking, if I can help him, I can help. But I didn't, I didn't have financially the means. She returned home and started brainstorming ways to raise money to help. And to her own surprise, she wrote a book. She called it Heart to Heart, Worlds Apart. She published it herself to ensure that all proceeds directly went to helping right here in Zambia. It was at this same time that Peggy's daughter Jenny decided to make her own life-changing decision. I was tired of school. I wanted to get out and do something. And I called my mom and I said, Mom, I'm just going to move to a foreign country. That's, I'm just going to do it. And she's like, remember how you always wanted to do the Peace Corps? Why don't you do something while you're going away? I got this packet that said, you're going to Zambia, and it had a little map showing me where Zambia was. I said, Mom, did you call them and beg for me to go to Africa, to go to Zambia? Was this you? So I called up the, the man that's over our area in the Peace Corps, and I said, did you know you're sending my daughter to Zambia? And I've been trying to help Zambia now for two years. And he said, if your daughter would have put Zambia on her application, we wouldn't have sent her there. We never, never send them where they want to go. So she gets sent to Zambia, and here I'm sitting on a little bit of money now because I've sent, sold my 14,000 copies of the book. I want to get some education over there. And um, she meets two boys who had just graduated from a teacher's college. And she said, oh, my mom will want to know about this. Tell me more. Well, she goes into the, the teacher's college. It's called the Kasama Teacher's College, just to meet the principal. And she said, Mom, he had your book open, and he was writing a letter to you. Wow. It was so interesting. And, and she said, this is the man that you're supposed to work with. I really believe you've got to come back over. And when Profiles in Caring continues, we'll show you how all of these fortunate circumstances combined to become the genesis of Zambia's Scholarship Fund. Do stay with us.